think first and foremost, you've talked to some people, expectations for tomorrow. Uh, is it going to be, uh, I guess, what are those expectations? Well, I've been to Washington several times, but mostly on business and never really got a way to go and look at some of the things that we're going to see tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, Washington uh, or the Lincoln Memorial, the World War II Memorial. And I did see the uh, Vietnam Memorial when it came to uh, the Lockport American Legion back in 2015. And we helped uh, protect it and watch over it so it wasn't destroyed or anything. Right. So that was kind of neat. But tomorrow I'm looking forward to even the um, the uh, space uh, yeah. museum. Yep, at Dulles. Uh, yeah, to see the uh, Ayola Gray and uh, the space shuttle Discovery. So I think that'd be kind of neat. Right. Yeah. Most Vietnam veterans talk about not a good homecoming. Do you have any thoughts one way or the other on that, and that this might, f you know, fill that void? Well, when I came home, I was. Uh, November 67 and my family was there my family you know greeted me made me feel welcome and a lot of my friends so it, no it was it was good okay but the mood back here did, did you sense the uh, opposition of it all I really didn't pay attention to it okay yeah it's I mean we were over there and we didn't want to get distracted for why we were there right. you didn't really have time to get distracted sure so, uh, no, I, I heard all, when you got home, you heard more about what was going on than you did when you were over there. So. <laughs> well, you couldn't worry about it, could you? Right, yeah. yeah. So t take us through when, when you first, when, you know, okay, we're, I'm going. I'm, in, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be in the Navy. And how did, that all, how did that all transpire? And how did that feel personally to you? Well, I enlisted. I didn't wait for any drafting or any of that. I knew it was coming, so I delayed it. I didn't want my life put, put on hold for any reason. So uh, I enlisted, and you, you did two years uh, active reserves, you know, where you go into meetings once a week, and you go to the um, uh, uh, training in the summer. Because I was still in school, so uh, then uh, you went on active duty and uh, went through uh, Great Lakes Boot Camp. And after that, went to Hawaii for about a month or two, and then straight over to Vietnam. Okay. So when you left Hawaii, paradise, for Vietnam, did you know exactly what your duties were going to be? No, not really. You knew you were going over there, and we took a, uh, that destroyer radar picket out of Hawaii to Vietnam. And then you were kind of told then what you're going to do and when you're going to do it and yeah. how you're going to do it. And, but we had a lot of training before that in boot camp. I mean, we had uh, sea survival and weapons training and boat handling and all that, you know. So you, you, one of your main jobs was you worked on a vessel that blocked shipping canals, correct? Yes, we kind of, kind of worked on uh, the central um, lanes for the Viet Cong, blocking them off, and and even had search parties searching their uh, vehicle or not vehicles, fishing boats. They were just they were Viet Cong boats. The skies is fishing boats, and some were fishing boats, so you didn't know who was who. Right. And we had Vietnamese officers that were interpreters for us, mm -hmm. and you know a lot of us didn't know, are they really Vietnamese or who are they? You know, right. so you just had to go by what you were told and what you were, you're right. supposed to do. A pretty dangerous job, probably, right? Yeah, once you got on their boats, it was pretty dangerous. But I mean, we had if there was a bigger boat around, you had someone with a submachine gun watching. And uh, they also uh, uh, got on the boats with a 45 in their holster. Right. But, you know, we had some incidents where not one of the vessels we were with, but another vessel had hand grenades thrown up at them, you know, so right. damaging the old one deck and right. uh, different parts of the boat. Yeah. So you, you board a, a boat, a fishing vessel. You have no idea who these people are. You hope that they're fishermen. Uh, how many times were... You surprised to find out that they weren't fishermen? Oh, <clears throat> yeah, it's hard to say. Uh, you didn't really know. Right. You know, if they didn't have IDs with them, they were taken to a place. They were loaded up on a destroyer or another vessel, minesweeper or something, and taken to another location. And then they sorted it out. We didn't know what who they were, or what they were. Right. Uh, I mean, 
that, that's something. I mean, you, you probably have a hard time training for something like that, though, right? I mean, so yeah, you could work on these blockade ships, but at the same time, to actually have to communicate and have to board another vessel, um, that was probably a lot of trial by fire, wasn't it? Well, yes, but you had your officers that were trained in that, and then you had the interpreters that were trained in that. So you kind of went by their lead, you know. Sure. Any incidences that took place where there was gunfire, other, you mentioned the grenades with another boat, where you actually had to apprehend someone and take them down? No, we never, no, we were okay with that. That's good. Yeah, no problem there at all. All right. Now we did have a, a plane go down where we had to go and, and help the pilot and get that. There was two vessels going for that one. Okay, so this, so he was shot down? Don't, I don't really know the exact, if it was a problem with uh, mechanical right. or shot down, but once they go down, you got to get somebody there to help them. And what was that rescue like? Uh, actually, we got there second. So. <laughs> so they already got him. They already got to him, yeah. That's fine. So, I mean, have you tried to explain to your, 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 you know, your family and things what it was like over there? I mean, we see movies. We don't know. Um, was it... I mean, how was it emotionally and and compare that to physically being overseas in a war zone where, again, you wake up every day and things could go it, the wrong way? Yeah, it, it could change pretty quick. I mean, you you feel relaxed at times because it's, it's more of a quiet atmosphere, but then there's times where you just don't know what's going to happen. Right. So. Absolutely. Um, but you really don't talk about it that much. No. You know, it's... Right. What, what is that? Uh, the, is, it, is that like a... And, and even now, you guys are probably... You go to the Legion, whether you're in Joliet or in Lockport or wherever Legion you go to, is there a lot of conversation about the old days? Do you guys talk about what happened over there? No, most of our friends just go to relax and enjoy the atmosphere and what's going on at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. What... Uh, I guess, how did that change your life? Did you, do you think you, you've been as successful as you have been because of your service? Oh, definitely. I, yeah, I think everybody should have some kind of military background and, and, and get involved in that. Yeah. If for no other reason, for the nation. You right. know, just know what's going on. Yeah. But, uh, no, I wanted to get back to uh, the States and uh, had a career with the railroad for 40 years or so, and so I enjoyed that. You got a bronze star. Yes, yeah. Or is, well, this, we had, is, it, uh, is it here? Yes, yeah. Okay. Well, one's on the ribbons that I have there, and then uh, on the, uh, the medals I have in the other room, I can right. show you those. So tell us a little bit about the Bronze Star and, and, and when you were awarded that. That was in uh, April of 67, I believe it was. Yeah, April of 67. And they gave us that uh, for uh, the Vietnam service, yeah, for the two campaigns. Right. How many years were you over there at all? Um, from six, let's see, maybe about 60, December of 65 till about uh, November of 67. But that wasn't total continuous, right. that was on and off. Right. I mean, we got to go have liberty in R&R &R at different locations, Hong Kong, sure. Philippines, Japan. Right. Yeah. All right. Do you stay in contact with anyone that was on that vessel or vessels with you? No, I lost a lot of contact with some of them, yeah. Uh, do you ever get emotional thinking back about that? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Matter of fact, even the other night, getting kind of emotional about just thinking about this trip, you know, what everybody it gets it gets pretty emotional. Do you have any idea what it's going to be like walking through baggage claim? Well, it'll be a little different because I used to travel a lot, so it's going to be a lot <laughs> different than what I used to do when I traveled working with the railroad, but. Uh, from what I hear from the people that have been there, they said it's really an exciting trip and very informative trip, very educational, and so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, what, what, have, you, what have you heard from people that have been on it? We were talking in the garage earlier. Yeah, what, what have those people told you that it's going to be like? Well, one of them said that it was really, really good for him, but he couldn't get around too good because he had some hip replacements and things. But he said the... Uh, Memorials in the in the wall were really something to see up close. And like I said, I saw the temporary ones, you know, the ones that they move around. But he said to get there to see the three statues and the the, the Vietnam Memorial is uh, breathtaking. And so 
that looks like I would definitely be interested in well, seeing and, that. And just the whole thing, too, of getting treated like a rock star, which you deserve for an entire day, that's got to be pretty neat, too. Yeah, I think so. I don't look at it as a rock star. Though. I just look at it as going to enjoy what they have to show us, and, <laughs> and that's about it, yeah. Right. I think it's pretty neat that they're setting this up, so. Right, 10,000, uh, you guys, somebody on that plane will be number 10,000. That's what, I, that's what uh, Susan uh, Nowak said to me, right. yes.